What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to discuss the five reasons that I think that you should not pursue a PhD. What's up, Navigating Academia family? This is your buddy and personal academic mentor, Dr. J. Phoenix Singh, coming at you to be able to talk with you just for a moment about the five reasons that I think you should not do a PhD. We talk a lot about this channel, about how to get into doctoral programs, how to get into master's programs, and I mean, what can I say? At Publication Academy down here, I walk you through step by step how to be able to develop all of your application materials and give you templates and examples of exactly how it can be properly done. But it doesn't mean you should always do a PhD. It doesn't mean it's necessarily right for you. Let me give you five reasons today that maybe you should reconsider, okay? The first one, the time commitment, all right? Pursuing a PhD usually takes a number of years. Depending on where you're doing the doctorate, it can be anywhere as short as three, four years, all the way up to seven or more years. It is wild. I even know people who've taken up to 12 years full-time research to be able to finish their doctoral degree. It is absolutely nuts. Speaks to the importance of picking the right supervisor, the right program with the right goodness of fit for you, choosing the right doctoral dissertation project. All of these are things that we talk about both at Publication Academy, but also on other videos here on Navigating Academia. So be sure to check those other videos out, okay? But during that time period, if you are studying full-time, you are, do not have a full-time job. All right, your 20s, for example, which is a time that myself, a lot of people pursue the doctorate. This is a tough time because those are the best years in terms of compounding your money over time for retirement. You're basically losing your income for those years to be able to put money away. Uh, and if you are working part-time, uh, trust me on this one, this is going to potentially damage your future if your goal is to become something like a tenure track full, pro uh, full professor eventually. Oh my goodness, if you are trying to be able to pursue an academic career and instead of focusing on publishing papers, getting grants, presenting at conferences, making personal connections, instead, you know, you're working some desk job somewhere, you're driving Uber and these things, the time is better spent on the career. I totally get it, don't get me wrong, and I love the idea of not taking on student loan debt and instead cash flowing your degree, but at the same time, this is rough. If you're a non-traditional student, maybe you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, or beyond, especially if you have a spouse, especially if you have kids or other types of commitments. God forbid, in terms of you know the family, you've got somebody who's relying on you because they're, they're sickly and they're financially reliant on you. This can be very difficult. Again, I have so many amazing friends who are still doing their doctorates right now. Maybe they started in the last few years, the friends I have doing it. But I can tell you right now that most of them who have children, this is brutal, taking time away from the kids, missing them growing up, so on and so forth. This is a huge time commitment. This is not undergrad. This is one of the most stressful things, especially academically, it is the most stressful thing you will ever do in your life. So it's very important to take that into consideration. The second thing, like I mentioned, financial burden in general. These programs can be very expensive, particularly if you're in a country like the United States. Many students struggle to make ends meet while they're studying. Way too often, people who come and work with me directly, especially when it comes to target supervisor and program selection, uh, if you ever wanna do that with me, the website's down here, it's uh, grad school applicationcoach.com. Uh, let me tell you right now, um, one thing that I do with people, I run the numbers, I look up the numbers with them and we kind of go through it. People look at tuition, they don't take a look at cost of living. If I'm in San Francisco, as opposed to, you know, some random city in Texas, let's say, it's probably gonna be way cheaper living in Texas than California. Also, if I am making money, I may be making more money at a part-time job, don't recommend it, right, in California. However, also at the exact same time, the cost of living is so much higher that these things are going to balance out, may even be worse, and also taxes in a state like California are way higher than taxes in a state like Texas. These sorts of things are important to take into consideration. Way too often, people take a look at websites like Bureau of Labor statistics and they're like, oh my gosh, when I get the degree, I'm gonna make so much money though. But you need to take a look at entry level positions. When you are first starting right out of the doctorate, how much money are you making? Very, very rarely is it quote unquote a lot of money, whatever you, you are going to, you know, 
classify that as, unless you're going into industry, right? And again, we also have programs if you wanna go into industry, right? What you would need to do at publicationacademy.com, right? But it's one of these situations where you need to take into consideration if you're not working full time, especially if you don't have a spouse who's you know blessed enough to be able to financially take care of the family during this time, Woo, and you're taking on student loan debts. If you're doing something like a PsyD, for example, program, doctorate in psychology that's not a clinical psych PhD, and you're taking on quarter million dollars of debt sometimes, that's rough. That is rough. I'm just telling you right now, financial burden, you take that into consideration, okay, before you do the PhD. Reason number three, stress and pressure. I talk about it on the channel all the time. The demands of a PhD program can be intense, all right, leading to burnout, poor quality of life, not only for the time you're in it, but needing like literally trauma-based counseling for years after it. 44% of women, 38% of men develop clinical depression or an anxiety disorder during the doctorate. Something to consider, especially if you have a history of mental health problems. Okay, I care about you, I want you to be all right. Number four, limited support and resources. Doctoral students oftentimes work way more independently than even master's students, but definitely compared to undergraduates. So you may not have access to the same even like mentoring resources and support systems that you had when you were an undergraduate, or again, maybe if you're in master's programs. This is so critical to take into consideration. Oftentimes we get into the doctorate and we're like, well, we're gonna be fine because my supervisor is gonna tell me what to do. They're not gonna let me fail. You should rethink that. You should rethink that sentiment. I'm telling you right now, people just really think that, that it's so similar to undergrad and the masters. Uh, you are going to need to teach yourself the overwhelming majority of what you need to be able to get that degree and do your dissertation research. Do not under any circumstances believe that your supervisor is going to tell you what to do. And if the if that's the only thing that you follow, you are in trouble, my friend, when it comes to the dissertation defense and also to your oral examination. Some countries, they call it a transfer viva. Uh, if you watch this channel, you know that I failed my transfer viva the first time around because literally my answer to pretty much everything, you know, why did you use that methodology and not others? Why, you know, like um, uh, statistically, did you use this analytic technique, not others? Uh, why did you choose this research project? My answer was basically like, well, my supervisor guided me in that direction and said this was the right one to do, so this is why I did it. That's a terrible answer. Be careful, okay? And number five, why not to do a PhD is competition and comparison. PhD programs can be really competitive and comparative, leading to feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt just among students comparing themselves to other individuals. Uh, it, who has more publications? Who's got more grant funding? Who's winning academic awards? Who's getting conference paper and poster proposal is accepted to top, uh, to top, program, uh, to top conferences? Um, let me tell you right now that uh, this particularly happens within labs. Um, if there are multiple graduate students, even if there's grad students and postdocs, postdocs comparing themselves to graduate students, it can be brutal. There's a great saying that I find to be exceptionally true, which is sometimes the infighting in academia is so brutal because the stakes are so low. Right, uh, and sometimes that's true in academia, uh, and sometimes we really overvalue the things that don't necessarily warrant us to be able to put as much value on them as we do during the doctoral process. So those are five reasons that maybe if you're considering doing a PhD, just take into consideration. You guys know me; I'm a big believer in just always going into things with your eyes wide open. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I love you to death, and I appreciate you watching this video. Be sure to follow us at the social media channels below. Uh, also, be sure, please, to subscribe. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would love to have you as part of our amazing community. 20,000 subscribers and growing, absolutely amazing. Love you guys so much, like I said before. Be sure to get out there and be your best self. God bless you, peace, I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for stopping by, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here as always. If you enjoyed this video and you'd like to see more in this series on navigating academia, please click on one of these links over here to be able to view more original content. I hope to see you there.